In the midst of the church, he opened his mouth, and the Lord filled him with the spirit of wisdom and understanding, and clothed him in a robe of glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who made St. Thomas Aquinas outstanding in his zeal for holiness and his study of sacred doctrine, grant we pray that we may understand what he taught and imitate what he accomplished. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since through the blood of Jesus, we have confidence of entrance into the sanctuary by the new and living way he opened for us through the veil, that is, his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a sincere heart and in absolute trust with our hearts sprinkled clean from evil conscience and our bodies washed in pure water. Let us hold unwaveringly to our confession that gives us hope for he who made the promise is trustworthy. We must consider how to rouse one another to love and good works. We should, stay, we should not stay away from our assembly as is the custom of some, but encourage one another, and this all the more as you see the day drawing near. The word of the Lord. Amen. Responsorial Psalm. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. The Lord's are the earth in its fullness the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord? Or who may stand in his place? He whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Alleluia, alleluia. A lamp to my feet is your word, a light to my path. Alleluia. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Is a lamp brought into to be placed under a bushel basket or under a bed, and not to be placed on a lampstand? For there is nothing hidden except to be made visible. Nothing is secret except to come to light. Anyone who has ears to hear ought to hear. He also told them, Take care what you hear. The measure with which you measure will be measured out to you, and still more will be given to you. To the one who has, more will be given. From the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Today we are celebrating the memory of St. Thomas Aquinas, one of the great doctors or teachers of the church. St. Thomas was born of a a uh, noble family in Aquino, that's why it's called Aquinas, in the year 1225. At the age of 19, he received the Dominican habit at Naples, where he was studying, and he intended to become a priest. But his brothers and the rest of the family members were not happy with his move, with his intention to become a priest. So they tried to trap him to make sure that he does not succeed. It is it's said that they brought, uh, they put him in custody in their own castle, and they brought a beautiful girl, and then you know they locked them together for a couple of days, thinking perhaps he would change his mind and marry. But Thomas was able to overcome all their evil traps. He kept his chastity, his purity of heart until the end, and finally became a priest. But while he was in confinement uh, in the castle, his brothers endeavored to entrap him into another sin, but the attempt only ended in the triumph of his purity. And snatching from the hearth, a burning brand, the saint, St. Thomas, drove from his chamber where he was uh, put in, confined in the custody. Uh, he drove from his chamber the wretched creature from which uh, they had there uh, concealed. Then, marking a cross upon the wall, he knelt down to pray and forthwith being wrapped in ecstasy, an angel guarded him with a cord in token of the gift of the gift of perpetual chastity which God had given him. Uh, perhaps that's where you know the church drew the inspiration of the prayer which we usually say with a priest when we are vesting for Mass. You know, each vestment we put on, it is accompanied by the prayer. Now, this cincture, which we usually wear around our waist, when we are wearing it, we always pray, place a cincture of purity around me to extinguish my earthly desires so that the virtues of continence and chastity may abide within me. It's no doubt that the church drew the inspiration uh, from St. Thomas uh, from what the, the angel of God gave him to put around in order to guard him uh, against you know, the desires of the flesh. Thomas never told this to anyone until at the end of his life, that's when he shared it, he shared it with his spiritual father. Having at length escaped, St. Thomas went to Cologne to study under blessed Albert the Great. And after that, he went to Paris where for many years he taught philosophy and theology. 
The church has never has ever venerated his numerous writings as a treasure house of sacred doctrine, while in naming him the angelic doctor, the church has indicated that his science is more than divine, is more divine than human. And up until today, his books are being used as textbooks uh, for those who study philosophy and theology. The rarest gift of intellect we are combined in him with the tenderest piety. He said, for me, prayer had taught me more than studying. You know, he said, for me, prayer has taught me more than studying. His singular devotion to the Blessed Sacrament shines forth in the office and hymns of Corpus Christ, which he composed. And the prayer of Tantumelga, which you, I mean the, the song of Tantumelga, which we always sing during benediction, was composed by him at the request of the Pope. So you can see how St. Thomas used all his intellectual resources for the benefit of the church, to teach the church. And that's why he's called the doctor or teacher of the church. And as we heard in the gospel today, when God gives us such talents or gifts, he wants us to be the light, to shine for other people so that they can see our light. Yeah, Jesus said, "Do not uh, the lamp is not uh, is placed on the lampstand, and not uh, under a, a bush or hidden somewhere. Our light has to shine. So whatever we hear here in the church, let us be the light to others in the society and the families where we live. You don't have to proclaim the gospel like I'm doing, but through your ex exemplary life, you can change." the hearts of so many people. You can draw so many people to God because actions speak louder than words. St. Thomas, pray for us. Amen. Let us turn to our generous God and bring him our prayers and petitions. For our church leaders, may the Lord confirm them to his generosity in their faith and service. We pray to the Lord. For our civic leaders, may God grant them wisdom and courage in working for racial justice in our communities. We pray to the Lord. For those who are living in fear, may the Lord comfort them with a firm knowledge of his presence. We pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here, may the Lord increase the measure of faith given us. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have gone before us in the hope of eternal life, especially those in Fred West family for whom this Mass is offered, May the Lord soon bring them into his loving embrace. We pray to the Lord. For the special and personal petitions that we present in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, receive our prayers and answer them according to your holy will. For we offer them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice which we gladly present on the feast day of blessed Thomas Aquinas be pleasing to you, our God, for taught by him we too give ourselves entirely to you in praise. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and he offers sure signs of your love, and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage, their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exhortation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the Jew for, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly pray that, partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Thomas our Bishop, Eduardo his assistant bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph as spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Thomas Aquinas, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious, grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and gracious to grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word, and my soul shall be healed.
Behold the faithful and prudent steward to give them their allowance of food at the proper time. Let us pray. Through Christ the teacher, O Lord, he instruct those who feed with Christ the living bread that on the feast day of blessed Thomas Aquinas they may learn your truth and express it in works of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and other evil spirits who pour about the world, looking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Have a blessed day. Thank you.